Okay, this is lesson 35B in Algebra 2, and uh, we are continuing on, and we're going to start talking about fractional exponents. And one of the things that uh, you need to realize is that you can write the square root of something a couple different ways. We can write the square root of 2 like that, and we can also write the square root of 2 like that. Now you're thinking, why in the world would I ever want to do this? Well, there are some really, really nice reasons to do that, and you'll learn those as we continue on with this. But let me show you what we've got here, how that came about. Square root of 2. All right. What we've got here is a an index of 2 right there saying that we're taking the square root. If we were interested in the cubed root, we would have a 3 right there. Okay, but we're interested in just square roots right now. So we have as an index a 2 there, but we don't show that 2 because you assume that it's there. When you say square root, you assume that your index is going to be a 2. And that's where this 2 right here comes from. It's the index. All right, what else do we know? We know that this has an exponent of 1. And we know it has an exponent of 1 because we don't put anything on there. So it's an assumed exponent of 1. That's where this 1 comes from. So if I had the square root of 3 squared, I could... Oh, now let's change this to... 3 to the 4th. I could write this as 3. Exponent goes on top. Index goes on the bottom. And that reduces 4 over 2 is 2. So that is 9. So the square root of 3 to the 4th power is 9. Let's see if that's right. 3 to the 4th power is 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. What is the square root of 81? 9. Okay, so see how this could very easily make it a lot easier to solve problems like this by just switching them to exponents and getting 3 squared and getting 9. So it's kind of a nice little shortcut to use. All right, so let's look at some of the examples that they have here. So let's get rid of all of that. And let's do um, 4 to the negative 1 half. Okay, before we do anything, if you remember, we get rid of that negative sign. So this is really 4 to the negative 1 half over 1. And that negative sign means that that 4 and that 1 half are in the wrong place. So we bring them down, the negative goes away, and there's nothing left on top, so we put a 1 there. Alright, 1 half power is the same as the square root of 4. So that gives me 1 half. Okay, so this right here. First number is the index. This, or the number on top is the exponent. Okay, so we just rewrote 4 to the 1 half to look like that, the square root of 4. And then I could change that to a um, 2. Alright, so let's look at the next example. The next example, they start getting a little tricky really quick. Number, negative 27 to the negative 1. Gosh, come on, I can write a 3 better than that. To the negative 1 third. First thing we're going to perform here, we're going to get rid of that. So we're going to take everything, and we are going to move it to the bottom, and take the negative sign away. But what about this one? Well, that negative needs to stay because it is not in parentheses like that. So because it's not in parentheses, we can't move it up or down over here. It just has to stay where it is. In fact, it could stay on the negative 1 if we wanted. Um, so, let, in fact, let's go ahead and move it over there. 
but it doesn't move. Just the 27 and the one third. Okay, so what is 27 to the one third? Negative 1 over the cubed root of 27. What number times itself three times gives me 27? Well, that's 3. And then I have a negative 1 on top, and I'm done. Alright, so you will get used to these, and you won't mind them too terribly much. Um, they'll always be a little tricky for you, but let's look at 16 to the 3 halves. Okay, again, let's change it into radical form. So this is called exponential form, what it is now. We're going to change it to radical form. So, we have a couple different options here. We can write this as the square root of 16 cubed, which, goodness, that doesn't seem like very much fun, does it? Take 16 times 16 times 16 and then take the square root. That seems like that'd be pretty yucky. So what are my other options? Hmm, I could write it as, I could split my fraction up, and I could split it up to this. And the power rule says that when I multiply those, I get 3 halves. My other option is that. Because again, if I did the power rule, I would get my 3 halves again. Okay, so this one here says we're going to take 16 times 16 times 16 and then take the square root. This one says I'm going to take the square root of 16, which is 4, and then cube it. 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 4 is 64. See, I did that in my head. I didn't even need a calculator to do that. So, um, you can do it either way. Really, you could even do that that third way. But, this way that I did right here is a lot easier to do it in your head. Okay? So, a little hint here. <clears throat> if at all possible, you need to, when you split these up into like the three and the one half, put the fraction inside the parentheses because you can usually take the root of this number and then do the exponent here. So that's that's the suggestion there. So let's try uh, the next example, 35.6. Okay, so first of all, we notice that our negative sign here is not in a parenthesis. So we're just going to tag it along, not really do anything with it. But we do have a negative sign right here. So that means that this number over 1, we're going to put that below. So we're going to leave the negative where it is. We're going to move the 8 and the 2 thirds down. So we can take the negative off the exponent. And we're going to have a 1 up there since there's nothing there. Okay, so remember what I said. We're going to split these up. And I said leave the a fraction inside. Okay, so now if we multiply these two, so notice, the 3 on the bottom, I, I uh, will actually just take this number on top and move it out. And what you end up doing is you take everything off of there so you have um, nothing left, it appears, but you always have a 1. So when you take this number and pull it out, you just put a 1 over the bottom number here. So 8 to the 1 third is the same as cubed root of 8 squared. Well, what number times itself? 3 times is 8, 2. And then we still have our negative 1 from up here. And that gives me negative 1 over 4 for an answer. Okay, so that is um, all of lesson 35. But what I do want to do, what I do want to do is uh, look at a couple more of these um, problems that we just did with the weird exponents, just to make sure you've got these. 
Let's look at, at uh, part D in the practice problem. 64 in two-thirds. Okay, so again, we're going to take our 64. We're going to take our, our 2 and pull it outside the parentheses, which leaves us with a 3 down there. Now, you don't have anything on top, so we have to put a 1 there. Now we're going to find the cubed root of 64, because that's what that means. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 16. Okay, so the cubed root of 64 is 4, and then we square it, and we end up with 16. Okay, so that's what we've got there.